Hi everyone. A few months ago, I put out a sneaker collection video and then I said to ask me questions and I'll answer them. I'm a little late, but I have a bunch of questions written down, so I want to let's read them. Um, the first question is when I start collecting and what made me start? I started collecting, I think it was right before COVID, like December 2019. So, you know, the best time to start collecting something that you wear outside. And it kind of stemmed from my makeover that I did a few months prior. I went to Japan and Japan, very uh, fashion forward sort of culture. Um, I wish, I really wish I bought more stuff there. And <clears throat> so I had kind of improved my wardrobe but not really my sneaker game at all. And I just started kind of asking friends who knew about sneakers, uh, you know, what they were interested in and what I should probably get. And I just kind of fell into a rabbit hole from there. And I've just been super, super interested ever since. Um, so yeah, I, I guess it's kind of just related to like, I want to look better. I want to feel better and let's finish the entire outfit, right? We got a new shirt. We got a new haircut. We got the new glasses. We got new pants. Let's cap it off with some new shoes, right? And yeah, just completely fell down a rabbit hole from there. Probably the worst timed rabbit hole to go down because, you know, I already don't go anywhere. And now we've combined that with a pandemic. So probably not the greatest time. What are you going to do? Uh, next question was, uh, I'm looking for a nice looking shoe slash comfort shoe uh, for someone who does not want to spend big money. Um, the first thing that comes to mind is Ultra Boost by Adidas. Adidas, however you want to call it. Adidas, I know, is not the correct pronunciation, but nobody does that. Um, super easy to find them. They, they make a bajillion of them in a bajillion different colors. You can most of the time find them for below retail price, clearance, sales, anything like that. You find a color that you like and there's 17 different combinations of that color somewhere on the internet or in a store. Uh, very, very comfortable shoe, easy to wear shoe. You can slip them on and off, no problem. Um, I would definitely start there. Uh, I'm, I'm not the most familiar with uh, other brands, maybe like Puma. Um, I'm a little familiar with New Balance, but uh, New Balance uh, is is not as ubiquitous as something like the Ultra Boost. Um, so I would uh, I would definitely start there and then kind of branch out to see like, all right, well maybe you don't like the model um, or maybe you don't like any of the offerings. Kind of do some some follow up research from there. But I think Ultra Boost is is a very easy thing to go get because they're just everywhere. You can find them everywhere and for below retail price because they can get pretty expensive. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, next question, how often do you wear the shoes that you like? Uh, the answer is not as often as I would like to be wearing them, mainly because I'm not really going anywhere that often, right? Most of the time, if I'm going somewhere, it's somewhere quick. Uh, maybe I'm going to the drive-thru. Maybe I'm just run to the grocery store real quick or I'm going to CVS or something like that where I just want to slip on some shoes, get in, get out. So most of the time I'm wearing uh, 350s, uh, Yeezy 350 V2s for, for those uh, who are unfamiliar. Um, just because they're very easy to slip on, they're very easy to take off, uh, they're very comfortable, and uh, yeah, it's just really easy to wear them. So, you know, I have a bunch of other shoes in rotation, but I don't really get to wear them as much because I don't want to spend a whole bunch of time putting them on, and then, you know, I, I just want to get out the door and come back. So, uh, if I was going out a little bit more, maybe if the Rona wasn't a, a thing, I'd probably be wearing lots of different shoes much more often. I probably have about, I wanna say like five to eight pairs in rotation at any given moment, but the 350s that I have probably get the most wear just cause slip them on, slip them off. Very, very easy to, uh, to wear, so. 
Uh, next question uh, in reference to a couple of highlight videos asking about the kids' shoes that I accidentally bought. Uh, did you get rid of them? Uh, yes, I did. I gave them to a friend who uh, has a very young child. I was like, I don't want these. I'm, I'm not going to do anything with them. And they're like, thank you very much. We'll take them. So. I do not have them anymore. Next question was just, uh, do you have any tips for collecting? And uh, I would say it depends on what your goals are with collecting. But uh, obviously I would just start with buy what you like and don't buy something just because it's hyped or expensive or something like that. You know, Danielle got a pair of Patrick Mahomes shoes that just came out recently. They're not like super hype. They're not super collectible, but she likes Patrick Mahomes because she's from Kansas City. So she wanted a pair of the Patrick Mahomes shoes. That's a perfect way to start a collection, right? Buy what you like. Buy what you like. Buy what you think you're going to wear. Um, buy it because you think it looks cool or something like that. Don't just be buying things because everyone's hyped about it or, or something like that or because they're super expensive or whatever. Buy because you like them. You know, secondarily, if that's a word, which I don't think it is, um, maybe it is. Now I need to know. Oh, it is. All right, that's cool. Um, secondarily, uh, if you want to buy something as an investment, uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You just really need to know the market, right? Um, if you are going to go buy expensive shoes or rare shoes, something like that, then I'd say you need to be pretty familiar with maybe the history of that shoe, um, or price movements or something like that. Uh, because I've, I've bought shoes that I thought would go up in price and sometimes it's worked out and sometimes it hasn't. Um, so there is that side of collecting as well, if you are interested in that. But if you're just starting out, buy things that you think look cool or you think you're gonna wear, that's the easiest way to start, right? And then as you get more familiar, if you really get into sort of the hobby and the culture, then you can start spreading your wings a little bit more. But until then, if you think a pair looks cool, just get them, right? Do that, start your collection that way. That's how I started mine. Um, I wanna get, next question, I wanna get into sneakers, where do I start? Just start looking at shoes, man. Just start looking at pairs. Find uh, colors that you like. Find a model that you like. Do you like low shoes? Do you like high top shoes? Do you like mids? Um, do you like boots? Like, what do you like? And start from there, right? I, I was a blank slate. I, I have no huge preferences one way or the other. I like low shoes. I like high shoes. Uh, I like multicolor shoes. I like black and white shoes. I like uh, monocolor shoes. Like it doesn't matter. Just find something something that you like and start going on websites. You know, StockX, uh, Goat. I, I don't know how much I would recommend Stadium Goods because they their prices can be a little bit high. Um, eBay just recently started doing shoe authentication. So eBay is actually not too bad. Just make sure there's an authentication guarantee on there. Um, that's not to say you need to buy off of any of these sites, although you likely will, but you start using those. I would probably recommend StockX uh, just for like looking at how much is available because they have like decent organization and uh, okay search um, on their website. So you can just type in, you know, blue, low top, or, or if you have a certain model that you want to look at, you can just start looking at those models and see if the shoe comes in a specific color that you want or something like that. Um, maybe even just hit up like a local shoe store or a shoe consignment store. That'd be a good one too. I don't know how much I'd really recommend like Foot Locker or Champs or anything like that because generally speaking, they're not going to have like the most hype stuff on the shelves just because they will do it, raffles or, or in-app uh, selling or whatever. They're not going to, basically, they're not going to have like the hottest releases just sitting on the shelf because they'll be sold out but you still can go to those stores and see just kind of like what they actually have available and start getting inspired that way. And then if you have a local consignment store near you, that's where they, that's where you're gonna find more of like the hype stuff or the more expensive stuff. And the people working at those stores are really, really gonna know 
about shoes a whole lot. And you could probably ask them questions, be like, I'm looking for this kind of a deal in this color. Does that exist? What do you recommend? Something like that. And most of the time, I imagine these places will be more than happy to have a discussion with you. I don't know, maybe, maybe they're not. Um, I'll have a discussion with you. I don't care. I probably don't know as much, but like you want to come into the stream and start talking about shoes. I'm game. Um, so that's that's probably where I would I would start out with uh, with shoes and, and trying to find a pair that you really like. Next question: How do you keep up with news? Um, I'm in uh, I'm in a couple of groups, and we'll we'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. Um, but I'm in a couple of groups, and they'll post about like upcoming releases and stuff like that, or any sort of leaks. Um, I look at uh, the sneaker news Instagram. Before I go to bed, I just kind of look at like, all right, what's coming out now? Uh, and then, the, you know, there's some Twitter accounts that are posting about this and that. So that's kind of how I keep up. And, you know, uh, uh, Nike and Jordan brand will also put out posts every once in a while. Of like, here's the shoes that are coming out for the next six months. And you take a look at them there. And then, you know, Adidas will do that as well. And Yeezy and we'll do that. And Nike does that. And, and New Balance. Um but for a while, it was uh, joining a couple of groups on on Discord, and they would post about it. And then, you know, I, I would kind of kind of venture off on my own and and start looking for uh, more news or or anything like that. Um, yeah. Otherwise, uh, uh, sneaker news or or any of these uh, websites that talk about new releases and stuff like that, I'll try and get a list and put them in the description. Um, but that's that's generally how I find out about like upcoming releases and stuff like that. Um, Next question, how do you feel about the state of releases? Um, just manual and raffles, stuff like that. Um, well, I, I know things have gotten uh, a bit interesting lately. A lot of things are moving to raffles now. So you have Foot Locker, Champs, East Bay, um, Finish Line, JD. They're all moving towards basically 100% raffles at this point. They're not really dropping anything first come, first serve. And that's kind of uh, because of, you know, bots and stuff like that. Bots would just clean up on these websites or just make it so traffic is so overwhelming that it's completely impossible for anyone to actually get on these websites and get a pair of shoes, right? So that's that's kind of the deal. And, you know, I much prefer to live in a world where you know, the bots are not scooping up bajillions of pairs of shoes and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and if it if this is what it comes to, where you're doing in-app raffles or local raffles or something like that, that's just kind of the deal. That's the way to make it the most fair to everybody, even if most of the time you're taking an L, right? Sneakers app. When was the last time I won on Sneakers app? Let's see. I actually win somewhat often on unconfirmed i actually got the the beluga uh, v2s recently um but sneakers i cannot win for nothing and stores around seattle like Foot Lockers and champs around seattle they never get any of the newest releases they just never do um every time i go look it's like yep no stores within 100 miles uh, are getting any of these shoes and i'm just like great what do you actually get do you actually get anything or what's up the last thing i won on the sneakers app was a shoe that nobody really cared about and then before then it was the jordan one low neutral gray and then before that i got a pair of the panda dunks I got those neutral gray lows. Uh, order was confirmed 198 days ago. And then before then, it was 255 days ago. So I'm on about a 200 day L streak right now of anything on the sneakers app. So yeah, it's it's tough to, to land some of these shoes um, just because it's all raffles. Like I still recommend entering raffles because you never know what's gonna happen. I've won raffles, I've, I've the Chunky Dunks. I won those off of a raffle. If I never entered that raffle, never would have got them, right? And I've won a few other raffles for, for some not as exciting shoes. Um, so even though it seems pretty hopeless to win a raffle, I would still say, you know, enter raffles as you see them, but just know that like odds are low for raffles and most of the time you're gonna have to buy on the aftermarket. Um, 
especially if you don't know like what websites are dropping when or how to handle trying to get shoes off of these websites because it's incredibly difficult because uh it's there's just so much competition now because the you know the um Foot Locker and Champs and blah, blah, blah. They're not dropping those pairs online anymore. So the amount of stores dropping pairs online is very, very low, which means there's more, which means there's more competition for those websites. And uh, it's just brutally hard, brutally, brutally hard to, uh, to get pairs manually. Uh, next question, how do you feel about reps? Uh, I'm fine with them. You know, if, if people want to wear reps, if you want to spend you know, 50 to a hundred dollars for a pair of shoes that normally retails for, or not, or not normally retails, but is on the secondhand market for, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine hundred dollars, thousand plus dollars. If you want to wear reps, I don't care. Um, but just don't tell me that they're real or like, don't try and sell me a pair of reps telling me that they're real. Right. Just like be honest about it. And like, I don't care. Cause not, there's not a single person who's going to walk up to you on the street being like, mm, oh, the text on your off white label seems to be a little bit off or these fake, like nobody's going to do that. Nobody's going to do that. And if they do, they're a loser. Right. But just like, don't like, just be honest with it. Like, I don't care if they're reps, like you want to wear the cool shoes, but you don't want to spend $2,000 on them. That's fine. But just don't lie about it. Right. Especially if you're trying to sell me a pair of shoes. You know, if they're reps, that's okay. I've gotten a pair of reps before. I don't care. Um, but yeah, just like, don't tell me that they're real if they're not. That's it. Um, next question. Are you afraid of stock X giving reps? Uh, for the average shoe? No, I'm, I'm not afraid of getting a rep from stock X. Anything in the 150 to probably about $300 range. I'm not really the most concerned because there's a ton of real supply of those shoes and uh, as much crap as they might get from people about reps or whatever, uh, you know, I'm I'm not the most concerned uh, with reps getting through on, you know, that level of a shoe, uh, something that's like not the most exciting. Although you could argue like that's probably when they let their guard down the most. Um, I'm still like not the most concerned about it. Where I would be concerned is uh, for more expensive shoes. Um, once you start getting into the thousand dollar, multiple thousand dollar range, you know, there's definitely been some some horror stories about some fake shoes coming in through StockX that I've seen. Um, so that's where I'd be a little more cautious. Uh, but I don't really get that many. Uh, old shoes, or sorry, uh, expensive shoes from StockX that are new. Um, I have gotten expensive shoes from StockX that are much older, and I'm not as worried about those because uh, I can imagine it's probably very difficult to make reps of very old shoes nowadays, right? I think it would be pretty obvious that something was off if something was made very recently. Although I don't know enough about you know, making reps and buying reps and, and all that kind of stuff to really comment on that. But generally speaking, I'm not really super afraid of it. Uh, next question, uh, avoiding creases. How do your shoes look so clean? I clean them. <laughs> uh, I clean them every once in a while. Lately, not as much just because they haven't really gotten a ton of use or I don't really care to clean them anymore. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't know, I just clean them. I have some, uh, some like some spray that you kind of mix with water and get soapy and just kind of scrub it and that's it. Like the, you just clean them every once in a while and, uh, and that's it. Avoiding creases, I, I don't really um, care that much about trying to avoid creases because like once you wear a pair of shoes a couple of times, they're just gonna naturally start to crease anyway. You could put in some of those crease guards that I know exist. I guess you either put them in while you're wearing the shoe or you put them on after you take the shoes off. I'm not really the most familiar, but to me, like if you're if you're wearing a pair of shoes, like just just own it, right? Like, you know, if you want to keep cleaning them, that's fine. But, you know, owning a pair of shoes, that's a flex. Wearing the shoes, that's a bigger flex, right? 
wearing the shoes is always going to be the bigger flex. And like, it, it's almost like the more you wear them, the bigger of a flex it is, right? Because you're showing how regularly you're wearing, you know, especially like a hype pair of shoes, right? So I don't really uh, care too much about trying to avoid creases because they're, they're just going to happen. And if you're wearing a pair of shoes, like you shouldn't be like worrying about um, how to avoid creases to the degree where you would, you know, still have a pristine pair of shoes after you're done wearing them because it would just not be that comfortable, I would imagine. So, yeah, I, I don't really worry about creases, but shoes, very easy to just buy some some shoe cleaner or even like just some wipes to like kind of wipe down your shoes. But something else is just I've learned how to walk again almost in in wearing more hype shoes or expensive shoes it's like i'm not walking around in mud i'm not walking around in the dirt i'm much more conscious of where i am walking and how i walk to avoid like scraping my shoes or or getting them scuffed up or anything like that so that that's also another thing is like don't be walking around in the dirt in the mud and all that kind of stuff so yeah that's it about keeping the shoes clean Next question, are you into botting, cook groups, and all that? So I used to be in quite a few amount of cook groups. Uh, nowadays, I think I'm in what, two, but one of them I have like a lifetime uh, subscription, so I'm just kind of in there. Um, and then the other one I, I use for a, a variety of, of bits of information. Um, but I, I used to be pretty deep into that whole scene. Botting I didn't really do just because like, like I have used one before, I'll admit it, because a, a few months ago, the only way to even get a pair for yourself was to have some software to help you out, right? But it's a lot of like work. And even then, like a lot of people think owning a bot just means, you know, oh, automatic win, you automatically get shoes. And that's not the case. Like I've tried. And it's not a hundred percent success rate. It's it's still pretty low success rate, and just the amount of like extra time and effort that you have to put into it, and like learning all this stuff that goes into how to use them correctly, and and all that, and just all the different intricacies. It's just like, dude, like I'm not, I'm not about it. Yeah, basically, I, I don't know. It, it's not an instant win like everyone thinks. It's sure, like, people who own a bot are, are probably going to end up with a pair of shoes more often than someone who doesn't. Um, but it's still not an automatic win uh, when it when it comes to that. And to me, I just, I couldn't really be bothered. Like, I would much rather just buy a pair on the aftermarket for, you know, 30 to 40 bucks higher or even in one of the groups that they, they might be selling, um, someone in the group might be selling a pair of shoes. I'd rather just do that than than worry about all that kind of stuff. It's just, it's it's not worth my time really anymore. Um, for those who are like, you know, it's their entire life, like trying to resell shoes and stuff like that, sure. Uh, you know, that's the way to get a lot of pairs, I guess. But for someone who's just kind of like looking to get some pairs every now and then, like, eh. It's it's a whole deal and it's it's a whole rabbit hole that I I've like I've I've kind of gotten out of that one. I still love shoes, but like into that super deep culture, I've I've kind of like pulled myself out of that. It's just like I don't want to. And it's, plus, it's also it's like you got to get up at six thirty in the morning if you're on the West Coast, and I'm like I'm not doing that. So yeah, I just I'm in a couple of groups still, you know, chatting with people every once in a while, but. Otherwise, I, I'm I'm not really uh, I'm not really into that whole scene anymore, and uh, yeah, it's just it's too much work for for what I really want to be getting out of the experience. Um, yeah, the next question was, do you have bots? Have you used them? Again, I I I have used one before, but the amount of work that goes into it is just like I I didn't want to I didn't want to do it. I I tried it once twice just to try to even get myself a pair. And it was just, I didn't wanna, I didn't wanna deal with it. Uh, next question, what is the Omega Grail and then some sub grails uh, beneath the Omega Grail? Um, the Omega Grail for me would probably be the Pigeon Dunks from, what was it, 2003, New York City. 
Um, I don't think my size is even for sale. I'm a size 10. So I don't even think I've seen uh, a pair of size 10 pigeon dunks. I think I've seen size 11 on eBay. I don't think I've seen a size 10. Um, obviously those are very, very high up or, or any one of like the early dunks, like the, uh, like the Paris dunks or, or anything like that. Those are very, very cool, but completely, completely out of reach. Um, some sub grails. Um, I don't know. I've, I've actually picked up a couple of the, the sub grails that I've won wanted. Um, I somewhat recently got the cause Jordan four uh, in black, just cause I thought they were super, super nice. Um, I don't know if I've gotten any other like really expensive shoes lately. I don't think anything's really kind of rung out to me as like, I need to have this sub grail for the collection. Um, yeah, I haven't really picked up a ton of things recently now that I'm thinking about it. Um, in, in terms of like, you know, the really expensive stuff. So uh, I'm going to have to think about sub -grails. I guess maybe, um, I don't know, the, the Trophy Room Jordan 1s look really, really nice, but just with that whole, how the whole release went for that shoe where there's tons of back doors and the raffle was scuffed and all that kind of stuff, I wouldn't feel comfortable about getting a pair of those. I actually just sold my uh, Travis Scott Jordan 6 British khaki just because of that whole situation. I didn't feel comfortable having those shoes anymore, so I ditched those. Um, sub grails, I, I guess otherwise would be, um, I was so close. Like when the pandemic started on getting a pair of the off-white Jordan one UNC for like 1200 bucks. But when, uh, they got them, they couldn't authenticate the shoe and they couldn't find a replacement. So I was pretty bummed about that. Nowadays, uh, you know, rest in peace, uh, Virgil, uh, the, a lot of those shoes are, are probably a bit out of my price range now. Um, but that would, uh, any sort of like probably off white shoe would be next up on the list. Although I'd be pretty afraid at this point of trying to get a pair of legitimate off white Jordan ones, just because they came out a while ago. There's so many dupes out there. There's so many fakes out there that I would be worried about paying for a fake pair of shoes. So yeah, otherwise, um, oh, uh, the, <coughs> excuse me. The red and blue lobster dunks. I have still been looking for a pair of those to complete the collection, almost complete the collection. Uh, but I haven't really found any in the price range that I'm looking at. So yeah, th those are definitely the next two on the list that I'd be looking for. But I, I'm being very, very patient with those because I don't want to, I don't really want to overpay for, uh, for them. Next question, uh, are you gonna put up any of your shoes for display? Uh, I would love to. I would love to reorganize this area back here and start putting some shoes up here. Um, so we'll see. But yes, I would love to at some point get some sort of a shoe display uh, somewhere in my room to, uh, to have them up just because I, right now they're just all, they're I'm just sitting in my closet right now, right? So I'm keeping them nice and fresh, but you know, I want to put some on display because that's fun. I want to look at them, right? So uh, next question, what is a good place to start with raffles? Um, good place to start would be uh, sites like Social Status, DTLR, Oneness, Atmos, uh, Notra, local skate shops, although local skate shops, they don't really get a, a whole lot of stock at all. Um, so that's a bit tough. Uh, a lot of those websites tend to do raffles for more exclusive shoes. Sneaker politics, I think also does raffles quite often. Uh, if you're in Canada, I guess, uh, uh, what is it? Livestock, dead stock, whatever the, whatever the site's called. There's a couple sites in Canada. Um, Europe does a, a ton of raffles, but I think they're all kind of split over multiple countries. So, you know, check your, your local, uh, your local shops for raffles on that. And then of course, if you happen to live in a major metropolitan area or a store that actually gets pairs of hype shoes, uh, that would be uh, Foot Locker app, Champs app, East Bay, 
the uh, uh, finish line, JD, sports, all that kind of stuff. And, uh, oh, I had one more. Oh, sneakers app uh, for Nike and Jordan. And then you have the confirmed app for Yeezys. Uh, I think that's about it off the top of my head. And again, I'll try to put um, some of that in the description. Next question, where do you buy shoes? Most of the time, if I'm buying shoes on the secondary market, it is either eBay or GOAT or StockX or from trusted sellers in uh, one of the two of the groups that I'm in. Uh, I've not really had any bad experiences with uh, people in, in my groups. Uh, most of them are not really looking to mess around or, or screw people over or have a lot of references. So I haven't had too many bad experiences with that. That's how I got my uh, LeBron uh, South Beaches when those came out a couple months ago. But most of the time, uh, GOAT, StockX, I think a lot of people like GOAT over StockX, but I found GOAT to be maybe just the slightest bit more expensive. Um, but I know a lot of people like GOAT. Um, yeah, StockX, eBay, those kind of sites are where you're going to be picking up uh, a lot of your shoes. You could also do uh, uh, local sellers. You know, you, they're not they're probably not going to charge you tax and shipping for that. You can go on something like OfferUp or I don't know if Macari does local meetups and stuff, but I've definitely bought some shoes on uh, OfferUp and I just, I pay cash because, you know, it's just the safest way. I haven't really been the most concerned with, with people trying to sell reps just because the pairs that I would normally be buying on OfferUp uh, would be within the 150 to $300 range. And I don't really think the average person is, is peddling reps. At least I like to give the benefit of the doubt. And if I do end up with a pair of reps for a $150 pair of shoes that I'm wearing, Anybody really going to know the difference? Probably not. Um, so, yeah, that's that's where I uh, end up getting my shoes. Next question, loose or tight Jordans? I used to try I had to tie them tight, and, and they just did not really end up being the most comfortable. So if I'm wearing a pair of high tops, uh, I wear them loose because they're not going to fall off my feet, and I'd rather be more comfortable than tying up nice and tight. Next question, do you have any uh, shoes that you want to buy that you owned as a child that you want right now? Uh, nope, because uh, up until recently, I did not care about shoes at all. When I was a kid, uh, when I was younger, I wore skate shoes um, or just anything that actually went onto my feet because I had to wear shoes. That's it. Um, I was not really into the culture as, as a youngin, so I have no sort of memories from a, uh, from an early age of, of wearing a specific pair of shoes that I would want to get again as an adult. Next question. Uh, if you have the opportunity, do you buy multiple pairs of a new release, uh, one to rock, one to stock? If the opportunity arises where I can easily do it and it's a pair that I'm really interested in wearing, uh, sure. Have I done it recently? I don't think I have. And normally, do I do it? Not really. Uh, it's It's got to be a pretty rare occasion that I do that. But I, I couldn't even remember the last time that I did that. Um, really trying to think the last time I did that. I mean, I have a pair of like the core bread uh, 350s that re-released what was it last year two years ago now but I have like a pair of the triple blacks as well so like that's sort of like a one to rock one to stock kind of a deal but they're two different pairs of shoes um, so yeah not not too often not too often do I do that uh, next question I want to get a pair of dunks on a budget uh, if you want that, then you're going to have to get lucky with a raffle or you're just going to have to find a, a cheap pair of dunks. Uh, dunks nowadays, you know, they've been releasing tons and tons and tons of different dunks. So if you want something that's a very simple colorway, you're probably going to be paying a bit more, especially something like the Kentucky dunks or the Syracuse dunks that came out. Was it last year? Those are climbing up to like, what, five, six hundred dollars at this point, And they're just orange and white or blue and white. Um, but there are plenty of cheap dunks out there. You're just going to have to make some concessions about 
color or pattern or something like that. Um, I would go look at StockX, go see what's out there, uh, and try to uh, try to buy a pair of shoes after they all get in hand, right? Because the uh, probably the worst time to buy a pair of shoes on average is the second they come out and you take you, <coughs> you excuse me, you take an L on like the sneakers app, right? Because everyone's rushing to be like, oh f, I lost. Let me go to StockX and buy them right now. You shouldn't do that because that drives up the price because there's not enough supply. When everyone starts to get those pairs in hand, that's when the price starts to come down and that's where you you buy. Probably about two to four weeks after a release, but it also depends on the level of hype on that particular shoe. If there's a lot of hype around it, that's the two to four week range is probably when you're gonna wanna buy, but then sometimes you might not even have that low. Whereas with other pairs of shoes, you could probably buy, find them even cheaper one month, two months, three months, four months down the road just because there's not as much demand. Um, so yeah, it, it really depends on the hype, uh, the color, and your budget. You know, If you're looking to get a pair of dunks for retail price, you're probably gonna have to find a not very super awesome looking pair of dunks in order to, uh, in order to get them at retail price. Or you just need to get lucky with a raffle or something like that. Excuse me. Next question. How much have I spent on sneakers? Oh God. Um, well, if you saw the collection video, you saw that I have a pair of Jordan 1 Dior's uh, and that was a little gift from me to me uh, after uh, doing a couple sponsors. Um, and those were a hefty price. They I bought them on the secondary market. I did not get them for their retail price. Um, otherwise, my my collection is, is pretty expensive. Um, although I have slimmed down a fair amount since the collection video, just because I kind of had a heart to heart with myself of like, do I really want all of these pairs? Like, do they really mean something special to me? Kind of like what we've been doing with the vault cleaning video. Um, are, are they something that's really, really, you know, uh, special to me? Do I really care about them? And uh, turns out the answer to a lot of those was no. So I have gotten my money back uh, on quite a few amount of pairs, but I've, I've definitely spent um, five figures worth of dollars on, on shoes. Definitely not six. I'm nowhere close to that. Um, but just on the Dior's alone and then a couple of the more expensive shoes. I have a pair of off-white Jordan 5s that I got for around eight, 900. Um, uh, the Sakai Vapor Waffle black and whites. I got actually got those pretty cheap around 600, like right as they came out. Um, the the Cause Jordan 4s, I think I got for around 16, 1700. Uh, so yeah, I, I definitely have some some thousand dollar pairs of shoes in, in the old closet there, but uh, if I, if I did not have the Dior's, it, it'd be, I guess it'd probably still be five figures, but still very, very low five figures. Um, I, I, sorry, I feel gross talking about like money and stuff. Um, but, you know, I haven't really, I, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty savvy when it comes to spending money and, and saving and, and investing and all that kind of stuff. So like for the first four years of YouTube, I, I don't think I spent any money at all. It was just all saving and all investing. Uh, next question. Was I into dunks before the hype started in 2020? Uh, sort of, uh, like I, I don't want to be like that guy who's like, Oh, I was into dunks before they started blowing up. But when I first saw the model before they blew up, I was like, all right, these are pretty interesting. And the, the purple lobsters, I, I fell in love with that shoe right before uh, things started to kind of blow up with dunks. Um, I just really like the model is, is very simple, lots of different colors. Um, so yeah, I, I like sorta, but like I was getting into shoes right as dunk hype was starting. So it was like a week before like things really started blowing up, I guess, but I, I don't really know. It's kind of at the same time. Next question. What's your favorite silhouette? Ooh, um, very tough to beat Jordan one. Very, very tough to beat that. Um, I actually really like the 5740 New Balances. I have a pair of those that I really enjoy. Um, I really like that model. 
Um, Jordan 4, I actually used to not like that much at all, but it really grew on me. Jordan 5, I actually like Jordan 5s more than Jordan 4s when I first started. And I definitely have some really nice colorways of Jordan 5s. But Jordan 4s have just gotten so popular lately. There's so many good colorways um, that they've they've definitely grown on me a ton. Um, I mean, I like wearing uh, Yeezy 350s, but would, they, would I say that they're my favorite silhouette? No, but they're just very comfortable and easy to wear. Um, but probably not my favorite silhouette. So yeah, Jordan 5, Jordan 4, 1s. Uh, the uh, New Balance uh, 5740. Um, I'm trying to think what else in particular. Um, nothing's ringing a bell. Oh, Jordan 11 is 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 not too shabby. It helps that the, that a lot of Jordan 11s are very good colorways. Um, but I actually haven't worn a pair of 11s yet. Uh, yeah, I think that's, that's about it off the top of my head. Uh, next question. Have you ever burned out on sneaker collecting and what reignited it? Um, I haven't really burnt out on sneaker collecting. I just think I kind of hit a critical mass of like, I have too many, like this is too many. Like I need to get rid of a lot of these and be much more selective about which pairs that I go for. Uh, for example, today, the, the eighth, uh, or I guess the ninth, uh, when I put this out, um, the Jordan 13 court purples came out. I love me a purple shoe, uh, purple and black. Great shoe. Did I really need it? Not really. And I did not get a pair. And honestly, I could probably get a pair for cheaper because I feel like th the hype around them is not very high at all. But like, that's an example of a shoe that I might've gotten a few months ago. But nowadays, I'm like, that thing would just sit in my closet, and then six to nine months down the road, I would look at them, and I'd be like, do I really want these? Not really. Um, so I've definitely gotten a lot more disciplined about which shoes I end up buying and not buying. So as a result, um, I, I don't think I've ever really burnt out on it. I've just uh, made better decisions to kind of quell how many pairs are actually coming into the house. Um, next question. What's the appeal of collecting shoes? Uh, I would say it's the same as collecting anything, right? Like what's the appeal of, oh, an example I give is like, oh, you collect stamps, but you don't send letters with them or like, oh, you collect coins, but you don't spend them. Like what? Like, I don't get it. Like it's the same thing with collecting anything, right? Oh, you collect Pokemon cards, but you don't, you don't play with the cards. You just get them. It's just something that people like to collect. I don't know, you know, ask anyone who likes to collect anything why they like to collect it. And they just, they like that particular thing and they want to get a whole bunch because it makes them feel good. That's it, really. And they make me feel good. And I like having nice shoes. And I like wearing nice shoes. And you know what I really like too is when you see someone else wearing a super nice pair of shoes, you get to have that little moment together where you're just like oh yeah i see those and then they see your shoes and you get to have a little oh how'd you get yours oh what's your favorite this what's your favorite that it's kind of like a little secret club that you get to be a part of when you see people you know just walking down the street i, I was at a burger place uh, recently and a guy was just wearing the uh the travis scott jordan ones and uh you know you just stir up a little conversation and it's just fun. Like it doesn't like age doesn't matter. Gender doesn't matter. Race doesn't matter. You're just there. You get to be a part of this little club and talk about shoes. And it's just, it's fun. It's fun. And anyone can be a part of it. And it's just, yeah, it's just really, really fun. So yeah, I like that. Uh, next question. Can you reliably collect big size sneakers? Completely depends on what you mean by big size. Uh, if we're talking like 12, 13, yeah, totally. Although 13s are probably at the edge of like um, reliability in terms of cost. Like a, a pair of 13s is definitely going to be more expensive than a pair of size 10s because they make more 10s because that's the average shoe size. I think it's like 10, 10 and a half for men is the average shoe size. So anything in that like 9 to 11 range or 10 and a half range, they're going to be making a bajillion of those. Whereas 
if you're a 12 and a half, like, I'm sorry, I feel bad for you, but good luck trying to find 12 and a half. So they barely make 12 and a half. So 13, I would say is like the upper limit of uh, reliability in terms of being able to collect. Once you start getting higher than that, prices are really like off kilter, like 14 and higher. It's either they're super expensive because there's just such a few amount of them that that drives the price or they're ridiculously cheap because not a lot of people are wearing size 14 plus shoes, right? Um, so you can find a pair of like size 17 shoes for near retail price when it might be double the price for a more common size because how many people are buying size 17 shoes, right? Not that many, not the average person anyway. Um, so yeah, it, it really depends on what size you are, what the shoe model is, uh, and, and some other factors. But you know, if you're anywhere in the eight to 11 and a half, 12 range, I'd say it's pretty reliable. The, the more, uh, or the bigger you go, the, the harder it is maybe to get a pair of shoes in terms of price. Like a size eight is generally going to be cheaper than a size 12. Um, but it, I'd say eight to 13 is still reliable. Um, but like 12 and 13 is definitely gonna be a bit more expensive on average. Next question. Any big regrets in buying shoes? Oh man. Um, probably getting a pair of the chunky dunk special box, uh, way too early. I was really caught up in the dunk hype. And I thought the Chunky Dunks were going to be one of those pairs that just goes to the effing moon because things like the Kentucky Dunks and the Syracuse Dunks were, they just started cheap. And then like, but like as soon as they hit their bottom, they just skyrocketed to like double, triple their price. So I was like, okay, let's get in early on these. Um, so, you know, that way I'm not paying five, six, seven thousand dollars uh, for this pair of shoes. And what I didn't really take into consideration was wearability, right? A lot of what drives price is how wearable a pair of shoes is. And the Chunky Dunks are not the most wearable, right? They're pretty wild. They're pretty out there. And people who are buying the Collector's Edition are probably not buying the collector's edition to wear them. They're probably buying them as a collector to keep them on display or something like that, which means the amount of dead stock pairs of the collector's version is probably going to be pretty high as a result, because if you are going to wear them, why would you buy the collector's edition when the collector's edition is basically just a different shaped box? So I got those at what ended up being way too high of a price, and if I, was kind of thinking a bit more clearly I could have gotten them nowadays for what I assume to be very close to the normal price uh, for said pair of shoes. So, but you know, that was, that was a, a learning moment for me. And that's a pair of shoes I will be keeping around for quite a long time to hopefully see the, the price of those come back up. But I like the Chunky Dunk, so I it's not the hugest regret. Um, but yeah, that that would be an example of you know, being still new to the market and, and being new to shoe culture and, and not really having things figured out just yet. Um, next question. If I wanted to get in for reselling, what sizes are best? Um, it depends on your budget and it depends on your patience. Um, I would say, like we discussed earlier, size 12 and 13 tend to go for a slight higher premium. Uh, just because they don't make as many of them. But with the lower sizes, you will be able to sell more of them because there's a, you know, a decent demand for them. Uh, so generally speaking, uh, it, it, it's probably a better idea to just kind of get full size runs of pairs. So that way you, you don't like focus a specific size too heavily and potentially get burned on that end. I think it's a much healthier idea to have a, a range of sizes as opposed to focusing specifically on certain sizes. Um, but 
I think a good example that I have was the Hyper Royal Jordan 13s, which was a shoe that I didn't think was going to have that much hype to them. And they almost doubled in price. And especially in like size 13, they got up to like $400 when other sizes weren't even hitting 300. Uh, so yeah, it, it kind of depends on the shoe. Uh, it, it's a very much shoe by shoe basis. And I would go on StockX, I would start doing some research. I would see, you know, what sizes are selling the most. This is because women's shoes, or rather men's shoes that are close to women's sizes that women would like, those might sell better because men are buying them and women are buying them. Um, whereas uh, certain colorways, only men are buying them. So they're not really buying the smaller sizes as often. So yeah, it's it's a lot of research um, and getting familiar with markets in terms of uh, what size is best because it's it's almost like a shoe by shoe basis. Next question: uh, Will I? Well, let's save that for last. Uh, do I have a pair of Kyrie's uh, at all? Uh, I do not. Um, I'm not really into most modern basketball shoes because I don't really consider them lifestyle shoes. Uh, I consider them basketball shoes. They're, they're made for playing basketball. But also, I feel like a lot of them are, are of a very similar shape and they all just kind of feel samey or they just have colorways that I just think are not very good at all. Um, so you, know, you look at the average basketball shoe from someone, uh, what, Re Westbrook, uh, the P Paul George, uh, even Zion shoe, Kyrie's, KD's. I, f I feel like the, the, the vibe around them is just kind of the same. And the colorways don't really interest me that much. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm just, I'm not really into modern basketball shoes because they feel like they're actually meant for playing basketball and not necessarily that much of a lifestyle shoe. And there's a ton of other shoes that I have in my collection that I'd much rather wear as opposed to any sort of modern basketball shoe. So, yeah. Uh, last question, am I ever gonna get a try to, uh, am I ever going to try to get a pair of the yellow lobsters? Um, <laughs> so, uh, would I love to? Sure. Is it ever really gonna happen? No. And for those not familiar with the the lobsters that I keep talking about, they were done by a store uh, in Boston named Concepts. And you can say, oh, Boston lobster, you know, you kind of get it. And this was like a series of five colorways that have come out that are sort of uh, based on this kind of like lobster sort of uh, color pattern, essentially. And they've done, they started with red and blue, and I believe those were both 2008. And then in uh, 2018, they came up with the green and the purple. I forget when the yellows came out. I think they also came out with 2008, but the yellow ones were friends and family only. So they never actually went on sale and there's not that many pairs of them made. And I think one of the latest sales was, let me see. Uh, we're talking five figures. Let's see the sales history of the yellow lobster. Here we go. Um, last sale, $42,000 on StockX for a size 11. There have only been about a dozen sold on StockX. Now, if you go back to 2016, 2017, they were selling for 3,500 bucks because the dunk hype wasn't super high, uh, but this particular pair is so rare that there's like they're, they're still going to command some level of a premium. Nowadays, where dunk hype is through the roof, you have a pair selling for $42,000. Before then, the last four pairs were $16,000, $15,000, 15000 13000 There's only ever been two sales of size 10. Those were both in 2018 for $6,000. If we wanted a size 10 right now, uh, there are none for sale. Uh, the only ones for sale are size six, which is an incredibly rare size. That has to be only like a couple of those in the world. That's 75,000, size eight, 55,000. And probably no one's buying those at those prices. So if I become a gajillionaire and I can find a pair, sure. Uh, is it ever likely to happen? Uh, no. No, would it be a smart use of my money to go try and find them from, you know, some some 
super exclusive seller. No, no would not be a smart use of my money. Could I do it? Do I want to get a new car or do I want to get a pair of shoes? At the moment, I'd rather have a new car because my car is 10 years old and I could probably uh, honestly just get rid of it. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's not a smart use of my money. Let's just, let's just put it that way. Uh, okay. I think that is, uh, all the questions that I, I mean, that's all the questions that I wrote down. Uh, if there are any more questions after this video, drop them in the comments. I'll just answer them in the comments. Uh, this was fun. I hope you had a fun time, uh, watching about the shoes. I didn't even go an hour. Nice. I thought this was going to be well over an hour. Uh, that's about it. Take care, everybody. We'll see you.